Hi everyone, my name is Matt. I'm the Director of International Student Recruitment and Admissions at Corvinus. And welcome uh, to our event. Thanks for joining us today. I know that there's there's some football going on as well, Denmark, Algeria, I think, as, as we talk. Uh, so thanks if you if you made it here instead. I hope you'll find the session useful. And uh, we're going to talk about everything to do with making your stipendium Hungaricum application today. Uh, we'll also uh, keep this session will be on our Facebook page, so you'll be able to play play it back. And uh, we'll put it on YouTube as well. We'll share the slides with you because there'll be a lot of useful links that I share today as well. A little bit about me. So I, I normally start presentations nowadays by saying this. This is not a Hungarian accent. At least I, I don't think it is. Um, not yet. I'm from London. I've, I've been in Budapest for, for around two years. Absolutely love it here. I've, I've worked in higher education for 10 years now in total. So I worked for universities in, in the UK for about eight years. Uh, throughout my professional career, I've been doing international student recruitment and admissions, meeting with lots of people like you, uh, guiding them in the application process, potential students. And uh, you know, the best part, seeing you guys get enrolled, get, get scholarships and then meeting us in person when you, when you come and start at the university. Uh, if you do want to, to keep in contact, uh, the only social media I use for professional purposes is LinkedIn. So you're welcome to, to add me on LinkedIn. Uh, I would say a polite request as you're going through the application process, not, not to message me about your, your application, uh, but if you do want to connect with me for, for future purposes uh, for networking, uh, please, please do add me. So what we're gonna to cover today, I'm very happy to say we, we've got two students who will be joining us as well, Lisa and Anna, or Anastasia, I, I should say. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the application process and uh, the key dates that you need to be mindful of. I expect you'll know some of these already. And then Lisa will talk to you. She's a, a graduate of the Public Policy Master's Programme at Corvinus. So she'll talk to you about her experience when she was applying and being a student here. Uh, then, then we go into the technical detail. So it's me again. So I'll give you some, some advice on how to prepare your application, how to make it really top quality, how you can make your motivation letter stand out. Um, and then to, to kind of close before we hand to the next speaker, uh, Anastasia will talk about the university specifically, Corvinus, um, and which programs we have to offer. Uh, then Anastasia will talk, and she's a year two student on the Bachelor of Communications program. She's studying with us now, so I think you'll also find it interesting to hear from her, as well as Lisa. And the end of today's session, we'll answer as many of your questions as we, we can. We'll, um, we may not be able to answer every single question, so pay attention to what other people are asking, because very often you see the same kinds of questions uh, come up. So we'll, we'll answer questions uh, as broadly as, as we can. Please do listen to, to what others ask and to how, how we answer those questions because it's, it's possibly going to answer a question you might have as well. Okay, so the process. So this, this is a screenshot actually that you see on the screen and it comes from the Tempus website. Tempus are the administrators for the Stipendium Hungarian program. So that's kind of the, the governing body, if you like, for the scholarship. And uh, this is in the call for applications as well. So you'll hear, hear us talk about call for applications today. It's a really important document. Everybody, make sure you, you read that as well. So today's webinar will, will help. Uh, it will summarize some of the key elements of that call for applications. Make sure you read it as, as well. It's, it's, it's pretty easy to read. It's not highly technical. It's around 20 pages, uh, but you've got really, really important information in there. Okay, so the first, the first deadline, you can see here 16th of January, 2 p.m., that's Central European time. You have to submit your application. Okay, so this is very, very important. Your online application, find out who your sending partner is. I'll give you a link, I think, on the next slide. Uh, so you can see how you can find who your sending partner is. 
if you need to send something to them and it varies from from country to country uh, then you will you should also contact them before this deadline so, so sometimes it's enough just to apply through the central system on other occasions sending partners sending partners is is like the decision maker in the country you're from that's the way to think of, of, of what a sending partner is or who a sending partner is uh, they like you to send documents to them as well sometimes electronically sometimes uh, you actually have to send physical copies in the post so if you have to post something keep in mind that you'll have to send it earlier so it reaches them before the 16th of january the next part is is the nomination well first of all there's a technical check uh, that will be done by the university uh, so we make sure that you've uploaded everything so be done by Tempus. They'll, they'll make sure that you've you've met the minimum requirements, not in terms of the quality of the documents that you've uploaded, that you've just uploaded uh, everything that you should and filled in everything on the form. And uh, then nomination process, which we'll talk about. So by the end of February, sometimes it's a bit later. So don't panic if you haven't heard by the end of February, sometimes middle of March, varies uh, from sending partner uh, to sending partner country to country um, but around end of february early to middle of march you're going to find that if you've been nominated okay not everyone will be nominated in fact uh, it's around one in six people i would say uh, statistically who get nominated so uh, we hope you will be if you follow the advice we give today you've got a good chance uh, it's the scholarships in very very high demand so not not everyone will be nominated Okay, a key point is the universities are not involved in the nomination process at all. So you can't, if you write to us to ask, why have I not been nominated? Can you nominate me? And we, we, we can't influence that decision at all. It's completely down to the sending partner and it's down to you to, to impress them in, in, with the quality of the application you submit. Okay, and then uh, we start the admission process. So the admission process is where you do entrance exams. Uh, we're going to talk about that, uh, but it will be finished by the end of May. And uh, alongside this, you need to upload a, a medical certificate. There'll be more information about what you need to do for that uh, once you've applied to universities. Tempus normally publish a template as well uh, that you should you know, a document that you should complete or ask your, your doctor to complete with all the, the exams that go along with that, medical exams, of course. And uh, you'll know basically by June, July, if you've been awarded a scholarship or not. So first of all, you, you have to be nominated. After being nominated, you have to pass university admission. After university admission, if you're lucky enough, you're going to get awarded a scholarship at the at the end of it and then the last part is making sure you meet all the final administrative requirements applying for your visa and then you'll see here the very last bubble it says arrival in hungary and you have until the end of september now that can vary from university to university so for corvinus the enrollment uh, the classes will start 11th of september so you actually need to be in hungary even earlier than that you don't want to miss any class uh, so 30th of September is the very latest you, you guys need to prepare to be here earlier than that and uh, the best way you can do this is providing all the documents as as early as you possibly can in the in the way that we we ask you to do okay before you apply you need to find which programs you can apply to so I've tried to include a screenshot here. It's a bit small, uh, but basically what you need to do is go to the Stipendium Hungaricum application page. And the main website looks a bit like this. So you'll see it's got this dark green color on the left and the Stipendium Hungaricum logo as well in the top corner. After you, you arrive on the homepage, then you'll, you'll have an option to browse for courses. Now, the first thing, that that page, when you arrive on the homepage, the first thing you'll be prompted to do is confirm your nationality. And normally, 
uh, the, depending on what your IP address is, so the country that you're using the internet in, uh, will determine the default nationality. So probably if you're if you're logging on in Brazil, if you're accessing this website in Brazil, it's going to automatically assume that you're Brazilian. So normally it's it's guessing the right nationality, uh, but there might be some of you where you have this different nationality to the country that you're you're actually in. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that it reflects your nationality. And the nationality that you choose is going to determine which programs are available to you. This is very, very important. So um, maybe somebody from Serbia is going to have different programs available to somebody from Belarus, for example. So the best way to see what you can study is to select your nationality, browse for programs, in this case, I've chosen the programs available at Corvinus at master's level, and I'm a Serbian student. And there's 11 programs available to me. This is the best way to see the exact programs uh, that you have available. From here, you go and do your research on, on each one of those programs and decide which are best for you. If you want more general information, here's the partners page. The partners page, as I mentioned on one of the earlier slides, uh, is where you'll see who your sending partner is. So take note of this URL. Uh, when you go to this page, you'll be able to select your country. You can see who the key decision maker is, and you may need to contact them to apply as, as well. Uh, so don't forget, you do the online application and uh, the process for contacting the sending partner with your application will vary. So the best thing to do is write to them and find out what they expect you to do. Okay, and then the next part is research the program. Please, please research the programs that you're applying to. Far too many uh, applicants year after year. I hate to say it, but I, I think many people in, think they're entitled to a scholarship. This is a one in a lifetime, incredible opportunity. I really, really support free education for people. I think it's brilliant to have international students studying here in Hungary. I welcome every single one of you who's committed to the process, who's worked hard and uh, you know, want to invest in this as a life-changing opportunity for yourself, for your families, for your communities. Brilliant. Um, but don't be complacent. No, you, you really have to do your homework and, and want this, really, really want this. So read everything that you can. Yes, yeah, your, your job to do that is the minimum requirements. So research the program uh, that you want to apply for. You'll see here on the left, this is the program page on the Stipendium website. So uh, on the previous slide, I showed how you could search for programs. Once that list appears, you'll be able to click on any of those links and you'll find one like this. That's, that's the option on the left. Read the entry requirements and then go to the Core Venus website as well and uh, find out even more about the, the program. Click on this the blue button, as you'll see in the right. It's a bit small, but it says program specification. Click on that and read the program uh, specification. You'll see the syllabus for this current academic year. You'll see all the courses that the current students at Corvinus are, are studying for that program. Very, very useful for the interview. Very important for the motivation letter as well. And to help you see which program is going to be the right one for, for you as well. So this is really, really a critical activity. Please, please do it. Don't just, just rush. When you're ready and you think you meet the, the entry requirements for any program that you'd want to apply to, then you can start the online application process. It will be very quick. If you've already written a motivation letter, which I advise you, you do, write it as a Word document. And then when you do the online application, you're just gonna copy and paste that uh, into the online system. So uh, write it as a Word document, get your friend, proofread it, get your family and friends to, to give you feedback on it as well, edit it. When you're ready, you've chosen which programs you want to study, you've chosen which institutions you want to study at, then go and do the online application. An important point, okay, the next two points are linked. So I've, I've written that you should treat your application with care. Always use a laptop or desktop. Don't do the online application on, on a phone. It will be much 
more accessible and user friendly if you you do it on a laptop or desktop now sit sit down and do it get get yourself in the right frame of mind to, to do this don't go to a busy coffee shop on your phone and uh, do the application there set aside some time be in a peaceful environment do it with care and all the all the details should be correct uh, in your in your application so one example uh, we see applicants who write their their names completely in your lowercase they don't even write their first name and surname in capitals i mean that's that's really complete lack of care you're, you're asking for a scholarship worth, worth thousands of euros and uh, you haven't even made the effort to to complete that by by writing it by filling out the form uh, with the minimal care so please guys uh, write everything as it appears on official documents use latin um, and yeah, don't don't use lowercase for names. It looks it looks really really bad. And then the last the last step is um, so at the same time you want to take care, but you also don't want to miss this deadline. So don't don't rush it, but uh, make sure you submit your your application before the deadline, which is of course 16th of January at 2 p.m. European time. Yeah, so it might be later or earlier based on your time zone. Nominations, as I've said, is not Corvinus, it's the sending partner. Yeah, and I told you uh, that, that around uh, one in six people get um, apply and are nominated. Actually, this is, apologies, it's the wrong figure for the nominees. It's around, uh, it should be 1,494. So it's, it's around one in six, like I said. So we had in 2022, around 8,000 applicants and around 1,500 of those were, were nominated. Then around half of those people were accepted, so they passed the admission process. And then around half of those people eventually uh, got awarded the scholarship. Okay, so this is, this is how it works out. So you can see it's less than 5% of the people that apply for this scholarship that end up being awarded a scholarship in the end. Uh, these numbers are just for bachelor programs only, and it's just for our university, for, for Corvinus University of Budapest. So the key, key point, I'm going to say one last time, I've said it twice already, it's not the universities that do the nomination process, it's your sending partner. You need to impress them with, by doing a quality application. After the nominations, then you'll be invited to do an entrance exam. Probably, so there's two options. Uh, we'll talk about this again, uh, but you can be priority one or priority two. Priority one means that that university or that program is your first choice. It's very important that your priority one is your first choice. If you're accepted for priority one, you cannot change. You can't go to your priority two option. So priority one is your first priority. Uh, if, if you've chosen Corvinus as your priority one, in April you're going to do entrance exams. By the 3rd of May, maybe slightly different in 2023, but in 2022, it was by the 3rd of May, it'll be around this date again. You'll know if you've been accepted or, or not. You'll know if you've passed that, that uh, second stage after, so nomination and second stage is now the university admission process. You'll know by, by May if you've been conditionally accepted uh, if you're priority two, it's, uh, sorry, so that's by 2nd of May, if you're priority one. If you're priority two, uh, you, you can have entrance exams in April and or May. Yes, yeah, so there's a bit more time for us to, to do your entrance exams if you're priority two. And uh, you'll get your conditional acceptance if you've been accepted by, by the end of May, in that case. Get ahead of the game. Uh, there's already preparation materials on our website and what I'll do today for all of the links in these presentations we will share the slides in the comments section of today's event go into the slides click on any of the links you see you'll be able to access them there's there's numerous links that I recommend you bookmarking including these throughout so if you're a bachelor student uh, bookmark or ba bachelor applicant bookmark the first URL if you're master or MBA, bookmark the second URL. There's loads of useful resources. 
and uh, some of the most useful resources is, is the preparation materials for the entrance exams. You can go now and get an idea of what you're going to, to have to be assessed for in April or May next year. All the entrance exams are online. So we, if, if we have interviews, uh, we do them normally by Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Uh, for certain programs, our business economics programs, we do a mathematics exam at Core Venus. That's all the entrance exam is. For all of our other programs, we do interviews. And uh, the, what we assess in the interview is motivation, skills, and knowledge. Yeah, so you have to perform our motivation, skills, and knowledge. The way that we'll determine this is that you've read the information about the program that we've talked about, including the syllabus that I mentioned earlier, and uh, any history that you have. It could be professional, it could be academic experience uh, of how you can apply, uh, how, how you've applied this, this subject specific knowledge. Uh, so that's how we evaluate your skill. Motivation, really, really important as well. Motivation doesn't mean just using lots of, of pleasant words. Uh, it means doing your homework to show the interviewer that you really cared enough to, to learn about what this program is about, what the university uh, what does, uh, what's, what Budapest is like and studying in Hungary. You know, you've really thought this through. For some of our master programs, we also have a written exam. So there's eight programs where you'll have a written exam as well as an interview. And uh, your, your admission score will be an aggregate or an average of, of both of those entrance exams. The higher you score, the better chance you probably have of being awarded a scholarship. I don't know for certain because it could vary from sending partner to sending partner and from program to program. Uh, but generally speaking, the better score you get in that entrance exam, the better chance you have of finally being awarded a scholarship for sure. Last point, very, very important. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't miss anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's really, really important that if you're invited to an entrance exam, you, you don't miss it. We had last year students from Core Venus finishing bachelor, applying to masters, they missed their entrance exam. We had to reject them. You, know, you, you really, really have to, to be on it, checking your emails regularly. And then when you get a chance, when you're invited to attend, uh, make sure you, you schedule. So we give you the chance to schedule interviews so you can pick a time that's, that's most convenient for you within the slots available. Make sure you do that. Any written exams, any mathematics exams, don't miss the, the deadlines and the dates that you have to do these on. Okay, um, my voice is, is going a little bit, so I've got a chance to have a drink of water. And I'm going to hand over to, to Lisa now, and I'm also going to look forward to hearing what Lisa has to say about her experience. So I hope you enjoy. Good luck, Lisa. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. So hello, everyone. My name is Lisa, and I started my journey with Corvinus University and with Stipendium Hungaricum two years ago. So currently I'm finishing my master. I uh, have a master in public policy and management. And uh, yeah, so and basically uh, I didn't know about Stipendium Hungaricum. And at the same time, I always wanted to study abroad. So I tried all the scholarships in Europe, in the United States. So I tried everywhere and then I found out about this one and I decided to try it as well. So uh, the process was uh, quite interesting because uh, it's very clear on the you know, website uh, about the application process. So everything was really clear. But at the same time, uh, I applied with my boyfriend, so we wanted to study together. And of course, it was really stressful because uh, there is um, the chances are lower than two people will get the scholarship. But finally, we managed it and we were really happy. So um, basically, uh, we uh, got this scholarships and but then the COVID started so our first year was fully online but at the same time I should say that in Corvinus the system worked so well that we had a great time 
um, despite the fact that we were studying from our home country. And uh, yeah, so the professors did a great job and we had really interesting lectures. So, and finally last September, so only, only one year ago, we came finally here and uh, yeah, and studied living here in Budapest. So um, as for the students, uh, for the students, Budapest and Hungary in general has lots of advantages and I really enjoy living here and studying here. So first of all, uh, it's a cool city itself. It's great for students. It has lots of uh, people from all around the world and it has a great nightlife because of course we came here to study, but we also uh, want to go to the clubs sometimes, to the bars, cafeterias, and Budapest has lots of things to do. So that's, that's a great city. So it's not boring. You will definitely like it. And another important thing for students in particular um, is prices, because we were really surprised when we came here, because we thought that every city in Europe is quite expensive, but um, Hungary in general and Budapest in particular, uh, the prices are fine for students. It's absolutely manageable, especially comparing to other countries, uh, to other cities in Europe. And that's a very, very good advantage for students. And I also want to stress the good things, the pluses of Corvinus in particular, because our, our professors are quite young and they are so motivated to provide really uh, good quality education to us. So, and uh, that was amazing because oh, we could discuss different things with our professors. We felt comfortable with them. They tried to make uh, lectures interesting for us. And it's very valuable when you really feel that your institution, your, your university tries does its best to provide the best quality education to you. And there are lots of different events in Corvinus, which is also great because it's not only about studying universities, about like it's the whole universe where you have lots of friends, lots of events, and that's great. And uh, yeah, that's a good thing to, to have such a variety of uh, indoor and outdoor activities and clubs. So yeah, you should definitely check Corvinus if you have it on your list of uh, institutions. And now I would like to talk about some uh, tips for students because uh, we did the whole job applying to the to Stipendium Fungaricum, so I have some tips for you. Uh, first of all, of course, as Matt previously said, check everything really carefully, read all the instructions, read all the requirements, and not only because you can make mistakes, but also because you can miss your opportunities. For example, I have my bachelor degree in international relations, and but there was no international relations program in the uh, in the list. So, uh, but I checked everything really clearly and I realized that actually I can apply for uh, public policy and management since I had uh, some courses related. So uh, you should def definitely be ve very specific while checking all the requirements because yeah, otherwise you won't miss your opportunities to get this scholarship. Another important thing is to uh, start application as early as possible and not to postpone it till the very end because uh, because some things can happen it always works that way so the earlier you start the the more the safer you will feel and you won't have such stress as some students uh, sometimes have and uh, another important thing is of course to mm, go on social media and uh, find some groups about Stipendium Hungaricum. There are lots of them because when you are talking to other students, to other potential students, you can share your doubts, your fears. You can double check the information, which is also very important. And the last but not the least by its importance is to uh, to check the universities carefully. Just be very specific to what you want from your education because every university has its like atmosphere, its uh, values. So you should be in line with your university University, with your potential university and then you will get the best opportunity the best experience and the the most um, happy the happiest moments from your university life so basically that's it and the last um, advice is not to be afraid of course try apply uh, because it's an experience and you will get a lot of um, good knowledge for yourself so that's it. I wish you all good luck and I will give the floor back to Matt.
Thanks, Lisa. Uh, really, really great tips. Uh, I think the first one was was very useful that you did more research and then found the perfect program. So I, I really liked what you, you had to say. And yeah, it re reiterates a lot of what I'm saying as well about the level of detail that um, you guys need to, to go into and look at uh, where you could be in a few years time. You could be could be a graduate of Core Venus. Okay, uh, how to prepare a high quality application. I've seen some of the questions uh, or comments people have made whilst we've, we've started the, uh, this session. So I think um, most of them are going to be answered, actually. Uh, so somebody's, uh, Darigo has been asking about motivation letters. In this section, we, we're going to cover that. A few more tips about application. Uh, so some I've said already, um, but let's let's just go through these. So I, I mentioned uh, about filling in the details on the application form uh, as they appear in your doc technical documents, like passport, for example. Um, but you have to write in English, believe it or not. We've had applications, I've seen applications in Portuguese, I've seen once in Chinese. Uh, you can't, you, you have to apply in English. Possibly you can apply in Hungarian if you want to. Uh, don't do that unless you speak fluent Hungarian. English is, is, is good enough, uh, particularly as you'll be studying in English. And, and use the Latin characters as well. So if you have a, a Cyrillic alphabet, for example, or um, you know, if you speak Arabic, then you should use the Latin equivalent uh, for, for your name. We already talked about priority, so don't, don't trip up on this. Every year people do. Your first priority is your first choice program and, and institution. It's really, really important. Um, yeah, getting the technical details uh, are more important than any emotional appeal. I think I'm going to go into this more on the motive when we talk about the mo motivation letter uh, give as much documentation as you can up front uh, so this includes actually yeah, everything uh, that you can provide do it before the 16th of january technically tempest will give you until the 1st of august to provide your documents don't wait do your get your english proficiency certificate as soon as you can make it part of your application that the sending partner sees Show them not just that you meet the English language requirements, but that you surpass them. Show them that you speak brilliant English uh, from the offset. So give, give as much as you can up front. If you've already finished your studies, so if you're applying for a master's and you've already graduated from a bachelor's, or if you're applying for a bachelor's and you've already graduated from high school, give everything up, up front that you can. There's no, there's no point in waiting. Uh, if you're still studying, that's that's okay. You just tell us what what you're doing at the moment. Send us the in progress transcript. Give us your your GPA or your grades to date in the current academic year or for the last academic year, and we'll wait till summer 2023 to get your your final qualifications. But if you have something, send it up front. It's going to help you. It's going to give you a better chance of being nominated, and it's going to help you get a visa quicker. Yeah, if, if you wait till 1st of August to produce documents, you have very, very low chance of making it to term before the before September, yeah, 11th of September. It takes more, more time than that to get a visa. You can't be, you can't apply for a visa until you have an unconditional letter of acceptance from the university. So if you wait till 1st of August, it's going to lead to problems for you. Okay, this is a very, very important point for anybody interested in the MBA. Do not apply for an MBA unless you have three years of work experience since completing your bachelor's. If you're studying a bachelor's at the moment, you cannot apply for an MBA. You, you, the earliest possible graduation date is uh, 2020. Yeah, the, sorry, the latest possible graduation date is 2020. If you graduated after 2020 from a bachelor's and you don't have three years of work experience, by the time we reach September 2023, you're going to be rejected. I know in some countries we refer to BBA as a Bachelor of Businesses in Administration. You may think that an MBA is the, the next program after that. In some ways it is, it means Masters of Business Administration, but you need to have work experience for an MBA. It's a statutory requirement. We reject good students every year because they don't meet the work experience requirement. Please, please check this. 
the credit requirements so lisa told you that she she found that she was eligible for public policy what one of the things she would have checked was the minimum credit requirements for the program if you're doing a master's in hungary so this can be masters of arts science or an mba you have to have related credits credits in related subject areas these vary from program to program we include them on every program page on the stipendium hungarian application website and the links that i showed you earlier the link for the master's application information has these forms that you eventually have to complete to to show us which credits you have if you get nominated you go through the admission process we're going to give you we're going to do guidance then we're going to do more webinars with you to to educate you on what you need to do but at the application stage you need to roughly evaluate that you're going to meet the minimum requirements for that program if you're changing study field you need to be really really attentive to this so if you're you're an engineer and you want to go and study business you might not be able to you might not meet those credit requirements and it's tragic because you go through the whole admission process and then can end up being rejected so please check these credit requirements different countries have different credit systems so you'll need to to estimate uh, how many credits you have in ECTS on the pages we give you some short guidance on what you need to do have a look and don't don't trip up on this one it's really really important and uh, we've got some guidance on your academic record and motivation letter as well for english everybody needs english language proficiency yeah so you you might consider yourself to be a native speaker um but have a look on our website because there's only certain countries uh, that qualify as native speaker we use the list that the uk universities do as well it's the list published by the uk government so there's very very few countries that are classified as native speakers you'll need an english proficiency certificate if you don't have that these are the, the certificates that we accept they're all equivalent to b2 level we always always uh, recommend the duolingo test if other universities you're applying to also accept it the reason behind this is it's an online test it's uh, and it's very quick to get the results it takes 2 to 3 working days before you get results so there's no excuse to not have your english language proficiency certificate before you do the application in january you can book now and uh, and do the duolingo and get it on time it's uh, it's around 50 us dollars to do the duolingo test these other certificates that we accept cost four times that amount of money some of them so that's why duolingo is a good good option for everybody all you need is is a laptop and internet connection the academic records uh, when you're filling out the online form the best way to do it is to start with your current or your highest level of education experience first so if i'm doing a masters now and applying for phd let's say i'll start with my masters and then i'll work backwards so uh, masters then bachelor's then high school Yeah, so start with the the highest one is is the highest level. Yeah, the one at the top of the application form. You don't need to go lower than high school. Okay, that's that's all you need to include. Uh, you should include your current grades or GPA, and what's what's the maximum you can achieve. So, for example, you're going to write something like, my GPA is four point two, and the highest possible GPA is five point zero. or my my predicted grades or average grades are grade b and the highest possible is a or 95 and the the maximum is 100 that's uh, to, to give some examples so you should include both and uh, you also need to upload documents to your application do them in the same order as 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 this so again start with the highest level first keep documents in the same order that the application forms in that can also help and uh, later on when you when you eventually graduate you're going to need to get your your certificate and transcripts uh, the highest level certificate and transcripts diplomatically legalized and translated if they're not not in english so this is essential is something that you'll need to do to to get the visa to enter hungary Okay, uh, I've already talked about the minimum credits. This is a screenshot showing you where you can find this on the page and a bit of information about how to calculate them. 
So if this is uh, possibly for the MBA, uh, and you can see for this program, you need to have 30 ECTS related. ECTS is the European Credit Transfer System. So that's how we measure credits in Europe. It's going to be different if you're studying in, in India, uh, for example, or if you're studying in Syria, they might have different systems there. You'll need to figure out approximately how many credits you have in ECTS by contacting your university, uh, because this is for master's students who've already completed bachelor's. The credits come from your bachelor's studies. So you can see for the, for the MBA, uh, you need to have 30 ECTS in areas like economics and methodology and, and business. Okay, and we advise you on how to calculate ECTS. You can figure out your learning hours by writing to the university and dividing by 30. That's how you calculate ECTS. One ECTS is 30 learning hours in Hungary. Okay, motivation letter. People have asked about this one. Uh, so I already said um, not to be too emotional. Yeah, so the, a key point for the motivation letter is be, be concise. Now, Cor Corvinus has 8,000 applicants a year. So the sending partners reading all of these, plus uh, from almost 20 other universities in, in Hungary. So there's, there's thousands of applications each year. So you, you don't want to write too much. You know, you've got to capture your story uh, in an impressive, emotive way, but by being punchy and, and concise. Okay. The most important thing is your knowledge of the subject and your motivation to, to study at, at the university you've applied to. Okay, it's really, really important, or at the universities you've, you've applied to, or in, in Budapest. Uh, but the subject knowledge is really, for, for me, the most important one. Um, next point, don't make too many emotional pleas. It is an academic scholarship. Every single year, every year, uh, we read lots of these sometimes tragic, um, you know, that very, very uh, emotional stories. And I know people come from different diff difficult circumstances and it's great that scholarships create opportunities, uh, but it isn't a chance to necessarily go into too much detail about financial hardship and, uh, you know, make it too emotional. Focus on this being a scholarship for academic merit. Focus on the positive story of uh, what you can do in your future career if you get a scholarship. You don't need to go into too much detail about uh, your family background, uh, however however hard it, it may be. Um, you know, this this is an academic scholarship. So show us, put, put your money where your mouth is and uh, show us that you have subject knowledge by researching the programs that you're applying to. This is the best way you can, can impress. And the way to do this is to use these program curricula so this link is going to be in the, the slides. We'll, we'll include the slides in the comments section. Use it. Use the program curricula for any program um, programs that you want to apply to. Okay. Evidence any relevant work experience. You know, the, the links to your program, particularly if you're a master's applicant. And um, yeah, talk about how you're going to achieve your career goals. I've, I've said this already. Yeah, I, I, find, I think that studying digital marketing in year two of this program is going to be helpful for me because I want to work at um, Company X as a search engine optimization specialist. Yeah, so you've actually read the syllabus and linked it to something that you want to, to do. And then the last tip is get, get people to check uh, this, this as well. You know, people that you trust um, who can give you constructive feedback. Okay, last few tips and advice. Uh, so you can apply, you can apply for two programs, it's priority one and two, as we've discussed. You have two different options. You can apply for two programs at Corvinus. Obviously, I, I recommend this uh, as a, a Corvinus em employee. It's a hard university to get into. It is the best university for, for business and social sciences and economics. Uh, so to give yourself a better chance of being admitted to Corvinus, you can apply for two programs with us. Um, but you can also 
Uh, say, say you want to apply for economics with us, you could also apply for economics at University X as, as well. Uh, so there's different different options. Just don't forget the priority is really, really important. Lisa said this point already, and it's a really good one. Just, just give yourself time. Make sure you apply well before the deadline. Regularly check emails in your junk folders once, once you've made your application. So you might want to whitelist our admissions office, uh, international.application, and uh, the Stipendium Hungaricum email address as well yeah, at, at Tempest, because they may also contact you. And uh, the admissions office, just a polite request, it's a no reply email. Uh, we're inundated with emails every year uh, from applicants sent to this address. So now it's, it's a no reply email. Please don't write to us there. We can't give people case by case feedback. Once you start the stipendium application process, you'll have this webinar, you have the other resources that we've talked about. Uh, there's the forums that, that Lisa mentioned. It's, it's really on you to, to go through the process. Of course, we, we're going to hold other webinars for, for applicants as they go through the, system, uh, through the process. And um, we're going to invite you for entrance exams if you've been, been nominated, but you have to show initiative. Yeah, th this is kind of another point. Now guys, we, we want you to be serious. You're applying to study in a, in a new country, uh, to live overseas. You've got to be able to manage living alone in a new environment, away from family and friends. Uh, where it's not going to be your first language that's the spoken predominantly. Of course, English is well spoken in Budapest, um, but it's going to be different for you. So you've really got to show huge initiative uh, throughout this application process. And when when you arrive here in Hungary, you know you've got to be you've got to have these survival skills and problem solving skills. It's going to be very very important for you in the future. You've got to be resilient, and uh, as I've said, take initiative and just a few more so i've already said uh, to check the resources on our website frequently asked questions page very very useful so we've got frequently asked questions amongst international students we have another another frequently asked questions page for stipendium hungaricum applicants uh, and, and students so check those out when we hold webinars which we will always join them Yes, yeah, so if, during the admissions process, we'll hold webinars to advise you on how the next steps work. Join them, they'll be useful. Call for applications, definitely read that. Encourage everyone else you know to, to read that as well. It's essential, it's gonna answer most of your questions. Yeah, if you're serious about a scholarship, um, you know, the, le the least you can do is, is prepare for it by reading the call for applications. Research about Hungary, Poor Venus, your programs, uh, the next point I've said, you know, you would be proactive, be prepared, and uh, we'll share this, this webinar with you as well. Um, okay, so just to close, a few, few key points about Corvinus, then uh, Anastasia is going to speak, and then we're going to turn to, to questions. Corvinus has around 12,000 students, so it's a medium-sized university. It's very, very international. So around 2,000 of our students are, are international students like you, and they come from more than 80 different nationalities. And Corvinus only offers programs in the following study fields, of which we are amongst the top 300 universities in the world. So really outstanding uh, compared to other universities in Hungary in these, these subject areas. It's, it's, it's the best place to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm employed by Corvinus, so I might be a bit... Uh, impartial, uh, but you know, um, these are the programs that, that we offer. Business and management, economic, social science, top 300 in the QS World Rankings 2021. AMBA and AACSB accredited for business. No other university in Hungary has both of these accreditations. That places us in the top 2% of business schools in, in the world. It's absolutely outstanding university for, for business. Uh, we're a member of SEMS as well, which is another distinguished honour. There's uh, around 30 other universities in the world that are SEMS members. There's no other SEMS member in, in Hungary. And the university has, has around 120 years of history. Our beautiful campus has three buildings. 
And uh, the one you can see on the left is the newest of the buildings, but we actually have uh, the building I'm in now, which is a historic uh, protected building in Hungary. It's based in a UNESCO heritage site on the banks of the, the Danube. Um, it's incredibly beautiful. It's the old customs house of the city, and it's a fantastic place to study. All kinds of famous alumni, most of, of the leading uh, people in Hungary um, academically and uh, in business have studied at this university. It's really a huge, huge deal. It's, it's, it's like the, the Oxford and Cambridge University of Hungary. And uh, we have lots of partners worldwide as well. So more than 250 leading universities that work in part partnership with us. A programs available, as I said earlier, you'll have to go to our uh, to, to the stipendium page and browse for the programs based on your nationality, because different programs will be available to you dependent on your nationality. But uh, having said that, you can see here uh, that we have the, the eight programs that we have at bachelor's level. So I'm not going to go through them all, but you can see they're related to business social science and economics and similarly the programs that we have at master's level as well so don't forget to check the, the stipendium website and research which of these uh, could, could be the right option for you we also have phd programs available and all of these are taught in english okay uh, i'll come back and answer questions in a bit now it's time to hear from anastasia uh, go Anastasia, I'm looking forward to your part two. Thank you, Matt. Hi, everybody. My name is Anastasia. Um, I'm a second year student of Media Communication Science Bachelor Program. And my story is a bit of a bit weird, I would say, or maybe a bit difficult. I studied in Ukraine for two years, um, up until 20, Cyprian 2021. And uh, at the beginning of my second year of my Ukrainian university, um, I realized that I don't like my major and I studied Turkish studies, which was really specific. And I don't know, it was a weird choice. I realized that I want to change something. And I started looking for scholarships, uh, but to start everything from scratch. So for bachelor scholarships. And it turns out that in Europe, it's such a huge problem to find full ride scholarships that would provide everything, basically cover your tuition fee and then even like some, give you some monthly allowance. And uh, I knew only one friend who was kind of on this kind of scholarships and I hit her up and I was like, where are you studying? She said, oh, Corvinus, Hungary. And she told me about Tempus Public Foundation and everything. And it was, I'm a very dramatic person. I have to say this I'm a poet so I'm like uh, when I found out about this scholarship I was like okay this is now or never I'm applying to only this one scholarship and if this works out then this is destiny this is faith and I'm gonna study abroad and I started my application process right from uh, um, November I think because I had to do my ILTS exam and stuff like this um, and by December my application was ready and this is where my first tip comes in. Don't stress over every minor detail in your application. It doesn't mean that be careless or don't care about your application. It means that if your doctor puts a signature in a weird way somewhere in the medical certificate, you don't have to go there again and ask them to rewrite the signature because I did that. And obviously it doesn't really matter don't stress about these minor details because in the end trust me if there's going to be something wrong with your application people are going to get back to you and tell you okay this is a problem fix this if there is really a problem uh, until somebody contacts you and says that like okay this is this is not right don't don't think that your application is crushed you're not gonna be even considered to be a scholar just because you think that this is something is not right because I was doing it the whole application process and it, it was a lot of mental breakdowns and stuff like this and it's not good so trust me people at Corvinus are so nice that 
I remember getting a couple of emails that, okay, this is not the right way to do this kind of document. So please redo that and we will consider you again. So it's, don't worry, everything works out in the end. And I know like a lot of people were telling me this when I was applying and I didn't listen to them, but trust me, it does work out. And um, if you have a chance, then um, ask people from your country who are Stipendium Hungaricum scholars and specifically from your country, because it's so much better to be able to ask questions. Okay, what do I do with our Ministry of Education? What do I do if they do this? Like, and not just random uh, scholars or alumni or whatever, just specifically from your country, because it give you, gives you so much more information. And then when you have to wait uh, this like a couple of months uh, before you get your answer and then you get if you get in you get your um, exam entrance exam date just try to be chill and try not to think about how you did your application because trust me if you care enough about this if you really want this if you are motivated enough you will do everything great and it's all gonna work out and now I've been in Hungary for almost one year and a half and I can assure you that this, to me personally, it was the best decision ever in my life to move here, to say, scratch everything. I want to study here. I want to study in Budapest and Corvinus. And I was so afraid to come here, obviously, but it was so worth it. Um, and the thing I like the most about Corvinus and Hungary in particular, but we're talking about Corvinus right now, is that people here are so motivated to help you, they are so motivated to um, to help you reach your best and make your best out of those years at the university. That you will just study. You will also have a lot, a lot of fun because, uh, as Lisa mentioned, uh, a lot of our professors are young and they are so that you you are on the same wave uh, with them, and it's just it's such a pleasure to. Um, to come to the university and to know that you're, you will be understood here and you will feel at home, even though you are far away from home, but you're, you, you will find a home here. And I think this is, this is such a nice thing to understand for international students. And I think it's, it's what every, and each of one, each, every one of us wants to um, get when we move away from home. So yes, um, basically my Final, to finalize my tips is that first, don't be too stressed out about this. Be stressed out because it's an important decision, but don't overstress it. And uh, second, uh, hopefully uh, for those people who will apply, things will work out and you will get accepted and you will come here. Just prepare yourself to study hard, but also live through the best moments of your life because this is what Corvinus gives you and this is what Hungary gives you and uh, trust me everything you will go through in the application process every kind of mental breakdown or stress it will be worth it in the end because this is literally the best place for you to to um, have your university years yeah I think that's it from me and thank you Matt for giving me the opportunity to speak and uh, good luck to everybody who will apply this year and hopefully see you in Corvinus in September. Yeah, it's great, Anastasia. Thanks. And it's my pleasure uh, that you could speak. I wish I could speak as well as you. Maybe because I, I didn't know that you're a poet, so maybe that's the, the extra edge that, that you have. But I think there was really great advice there, guys. And the, both the girls who presented today, I'm happy to say that I, I know them both and we actually work together as well. They're top, top students, great, great people. And you know, really, yeah, th this could be you, some of you in a few years as well. Um, so I hope you've, you've listened to what they've both said. Uh, okay, we're gonna do some questions now. So um, they're gonna show on the screen. I guess, Anna, if you want, uh, you can answer any of these as well. Um, but if they're, if they're more technical, I'll take them. And maybe you can add something if there's there's anything that you'd like to. Uh, so Aruna is asking about the financial requirements shown on the bank account to get a visa. If you get a scholarship, then you'll get what's called a letter of award. Now, norm normally to apply to Hungary as a student and to get a student visa, 
there is a financial requirement which involves you showing bank statements. Um, basically, that's the money that will help you to, to live whilst, whilst you're here as a student. But as a scholarship holder, you get, you get some money as part of the scholarship program. So the scholarship, first of all, covers your tuition fee. So you'll have completely free tuition. And second, uh, there's two other components. One is accommodation assistance. So you either get university accommodation or uh, you'll get a small allowance around 100 euros, worth around 100 euros towards your accommodation. So you'll get one of those. You'll get accommodation space or accommodation allowance. And uh, you get a living cost allowance, which is around 100 euros as well. So uh, this is everything that you'll get with the scholarship. And because you'll, you'll, you'll have these financial uh, stipends, they are, you know, they're scholar monthly scholarship payments that are made to you. Um, and you'll have that letter of award, which will show that you're entitled to, to the scholarship. There's no bank account requirement for you to, to get a visa. So this is, is important. Uh, a side note here, guys, the scholarship allowances are not enough money for you to live on in Hungary. Uh, Anastasia might add to this, but we typically say that it costs around 7,000 euros per year. Yeah, th this amount that you're getting is, is not enough. So you, you should have some savings or you should be prepared to, to have a part-time job. Anastasia and Lisa have both worked at the university during their, their studies as well. So it's hard to get a job at the university. It's competitive, but that's something you, you can consider. Uh, but as an international student in Hungary, you can work 24 hours a week as well. So just keep in mind, it won't be enough on its, its own. Do you want to add anything to, to this? Yes, yeah, sure. I agree that uh, the monthly allowance is not enough, even though it's we are all really thankful that uh, we are being given this money because it's it's a great help and it can cover, for example, um, if you rent a room, a small room somewhere, yeah, it can be enough for your accommodation, but you will you will obviously have to think about everything else. And uh, from the experience of from my experience and from the experience of my friends, it's not that hard to find a part-time job for international students. So, yeah, I would say that think about this, but uh, it's 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 possible, and it's it's great still that we have uh, some money, even though it's it may not be that like really enough, but it's it's still good. Yeah, can never have enough money, can you? Or may, maybe you can, who knows? It's not, not the key to happiness. Um, okay, thank, thanks, Anna. Next question, as uh, says so from Maid or Majid, perhaps it should be pronounced. Uh, if I get accepted by my second choice, rejected by my first, do I still have the chance to be awarded? Yes, that, that's exactly how the priority two works. So it's your, your insurance option if you're not accepted by your first. That, that's pretty much, guys, the only scenario in which you can end up at your priority two. Because if you're accepted by your priority one, you, you can't go to your priority two. Yeah, so you can be accepted by both, in which case you're going to go to priority one. You can be accepted priority one, rejected priority two. In, the, in that case, you're going to go to priority one. Or you can be uh, rejected priority one, accepted priority two. That's the case in which you can go to your, your priority two. Uh, so I think that answers that one. You probably don't want to add anything to this, Anna. There's not much more to say. Okay, so next question is from Dariga. Yeah, Dariga, I saw what time that you, you published this comment. I think we covered the motivation letter in, in the slides. So I won't go through everything again, but the, you know, the key takeaways um, is read the program specifications. And then using that information, make focus your letter on, on the, the academic foundations of that program and, and how studying that is going to help you in your career aspirations. This is the really, really important part. Go down this path, guys, uh, rather than uh, making it too, too emotional. Anna, do you want to add anything to, to that? Uh, yes, I remember when I was writing my uh, motivation letter and I got this advice that if you can write specifically how you will implement your studies in like in, um, 
either in your future career, but what I did is I wrote when I will go back home, I will do this, this and that with this, this and this experience. And I think it's something that really uh, maybe even stands out and it's really specific. So you can show the admission committee that you need this for this. And it's, I think it's, it really shows that you are motivated for this and this reason. So, yeah, and I did write my motivational letter a bit, I think, too emotional, but um, it was still a great experience. It was for me, it was the first motivational letter ever for a university. So, yeah, uh, it won't be perfect, but uh, you should try as as, um, as hard as you can to make it really good. And yeah, give it, give it to a lot of people to check it, to read it through, especially for um, give it to the university students abroad. I remember I gave it to a couple of people who studied at NYU and they gave me a lot of great uh, advice on how to improve it. So yeah, it's, it's a really important step. Yeah, you, you did tell us that you're a dramatic person and uh, we know now that you're a poet as well. Uh, so it's, uh, you guys, a bit of emotion is good. I don't want to say that you, we don't expect you to be robots. We do want you to tell your story. I think the point is, you know, focus most on the academic and yeah, emotional, but not emotional blackmail. I think that's, that's, that's my point. You know? um, and it will, will have more power that way. Okay. Uh, are there any master's programs in speech and language pathology? Uh, not at Core Venus, because you know, we're a business economics, social science uh, university. The only thing remotely close and it's not very close is what Anna's studying or Anastasia, I, sh I should call her. Um, I'm used to calling, calling you Anna, sorry. Anna's a nice name. Um, it's communications. This is the only thing really closely related, um, but I don't know what the pathology element is, is of that program. It must, must be a technical term. I guess it's related to language rather than blood pathology. Um, but Elena, try, try another university and see what programs they have. Aguda, Stephen from Nigeria, primary language English, and also study bachelor's de degree in English. Do I need the English proficiency test? Uh, Nigeria is not one of the countries that is on the, the list of native, that qualifies as native English speaking countries. I know that people from Nigeria speak English. Uh, the UK government doesn't recognize it on their list. But uh, if you've studied your bachelor degree or you've studied your last four years of high school in English and can get proof from your university, or high school, uh, that that was the language of instruction and assessment for the full duration of your, your studies or the last four years of high school, then you can be exempt from the English language requirements. That's the only, the only situation, so it should be an official letter. Okay, I think uh, the next question uh, is about... Okay, uh, it's about IELTS. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, from Aruna. So I completed my bachelor's in accounting in English for four years. Do I need IELTS? Well, Aruna, if you can get the letter from your university saying that you study in English, assessed, and for the full, full four years, uh, you, you can be exempt from that. Okay, Tahir, this is a long question. I, I saw this one earlier. So Tahir is asking about credit requirements for the Masters in International Relations um, and his bachelor, I think it's his, yeah, bachelor is in Applied Economics. Um, and uh, he needs to have 30 ECTS or, or applicants who apply to, to this program need to have 30 ECTS. Um, so here, there's no easy way to answer this question. It's a bit, bit of a tricky one for us to do in the webinar. What you'll need to do is go to the master's application info page that we talked about earlier and go to the credit recognition forms. And what you'll see for international relations is there are different study areas and uh, there might be a maximum of what you can have in each study area. So you might for, for economics, uh, or business economics or um, yeah, economics as an area, only be able to have a maximum of 10. So you can, you can acquire your 30 ECTS uh, however possible, but you can't exceed these, these maximum thresholds. Have a look 
uh, at the forms, that's going to be the best way to to get your head around the, the answer to that one. I'm afraid I just just can't explain it right here. It's it's quite a personal question, but I hope that gives you the start you need to to do the research. Uh, what is the G? What GP is okay to apply for a scholarship? Uh, the Elsa, uh, there's no GPA requirements. I guess you're from from Albania. Looking at the name, I was was if you are, I was there recently. Really, really nice. I, I went to Tirana a few weeks ago. Um, G, no GPA requirements. Okay, we want you should have a good GPA. What does good GPA mean? Ideally, people who have four out of five or eight out of ten and, and above these kind of grades. Uh, but there's not specifically a GPA requirement. The entrance exam is, is important. Anna, do you want to say anything about your GPA or <laughs> give advice to people on this? Yeah, I think I had uh, my GPA was like 11.9 out of 12, if I can brag a bit. <laughs> so I didn't I, I, I remember I was trying to find some information about this, if I should like convert my GPA to another format. And I think I had to. I'm not sure, though, if, if, if somebody has the same questions, you should double check. Because in Ukraine, we have a different um, type of GPA or whatever uh, compared to Europe. But yeah, I don't think that anybody really gave. I mean, from the people I spoke to, nobody really gave a thought about this. So, yeah. Just, I, I don't think there is like such thing as like, I agree with you, Matt, like what is a good GPA? Like, yeah, there is, there are some standards, but still, yeah. Actually, great, great distribution varies a lot from country to country. So there's some countries where it's quite easy to get five out of five. Uh, and there's others where it's, yeah, you know, if you get three out of five, it's, it's a really big achievement. Um, so that Corvinus, the most important thing, the other is Corvinus doesn't have GPA requirements. How you perform in the entrance exam is the most important thing. And that you, you graduate, so you need to complete your studies. So you can't drop out of high school. Uh, you can't drop out of a bachelor's if you want to apply for a master's. Uh, good GPA is gonna look good on your application. It might be something that the sending partner looks at, of course. Yeah, so we, we encourage everybody to, to get the best grades possible. Okay, uh, next one, Ismail, uh, does the university offer materials to prepare for the entrance exam? Yes, I told you in the slides uh, that we do. So you might have asked that a bit earlier, you might have asked later, but yes, the good news is we do. And uh, we'll make those links available in the comments section. We'll share the slides and you'll, you'll be able to click on the links. It was, was in the second part of, of my presentation uh, where I include the links for, for that. I think maybe the first part, I don't know. You'll find it. <laughs> yep, next question, please, Lily. Another one from Ismail. Uh, do we need to make separate applications for the sending partners and for the university admission process, or is it only one application? Yeah, this is, this is a good question. So uh, you have to apply through the system uh, to the university before 16th of January. This is pretty much all I can tell you. I think it will be a good one for Anastasia to share her experience um, and how it worked with her sending partner. But generally what you can do is contact your sending partner or you can join forums, uh, the people from your country you're part of and uh, find out what, what they had to do because it really varies from partner to partner. The university, the only thing that we'll see is the online application. Uh, but Anna, what, what did you have to do? when you applied, did you have to set, contact them directly? Uh, yes, of course. I remember I found um, on the Stipendium Hungarikon website, there is a section, I think it's called Sending Partners. And you just, um, you should have to find your country. And in my case, there was a phone number of a man in the Ministry of Education of Ukraine. Uh, and I called him and he just basically told me that you, uh, that I sh should collect uh, package of documents, everything the same that I would be sending through uh, Dream Apply uh, system. And I just should send the same package to them uh, via email. And uh, that was basically it. They had a deadline too. And the most important thing for me was that I was so stressed. I was calling them all the time. And that was a good thing because... Um, 
I called them basically to double check if they got my documents and they said, yes, we, we got them. And that, that was a really important thing because a lot of people didn't call them and they didn't get through the sending partner. So like they were not even considered for some reason. I don't know, we, probably they had some problems or whatever, but just always double check with the sending partner. Don't, don't skip this step because I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's like, it doesn't really matter. No, it does. It's the very, very first step of your application. So always, always double check. And to me, it was the same uh, package of documents. Not, I don't think there was one document that I should have added to the to the sending partner that Corvinus didn't need. So it was completely identical. Yeah. I was me. Still muted. Okay. Um, yeah, that was great. I think a really good piece of advice you gave was about calling the sending partner as well. So guys, if you try to call rather than email, uh, it might might help you get a quick response. So, so do that. Uh, sorry, my colleague is messaging me. So sorry if you can hear that. Um, Aguda is asking about, can I do a student job outside of the university or within while schooling and for how many hours a week? We, we answered this one already. So yes, you can apply for jobs. If you're lucky enough, you can get a job at the university. We have a careers newsletter that you can sign up for. I think, uh, Anna, correct me, I think it's 24 hours a week that you can work as a, a non-EU student with your visa. Do you, do you know, Anna? Yes, I think that's right. I think, yeah, I think either 25 or, or I think up until 30 something, 24, 25, 30, something like this. I don't remember the exact, uh, the exact number, but I do remember <laughs> that the, most of the time, the uh, employers write up until 30 hours a week. I think that's what I saw. So, yeah. Yeah, be, be prepared for 24 guys. And if you're lucky, you might get a bit extra. But yes, you can you can get a job in Hungary. Uh, very popular now is, is food delivery. So we have two big food delivery companies. One is Food Panda. The other one is Vault. I see a lot of international students working for, for both of these. Uh, of course, you can do bar work, uh, coffee shops, most kind of like gig, gig economy jobs. Uh, you can work on your Hungarian as well learn a bit more Hungarian with, with that. Um, by the way, I learn Hungarian. Anna learns as, as well as part of, of being a stipendium Hungarian student, you'll, you'll get free Hungarian classes. That's a nice little little added uh, element to this to this program. You don't need to learn, but it's, it's always a, a bonus if you can say a few things and it's a fun challenge. Uh, the typical salary, I would say is around five euros per hour. Yeah, um, that's that's typically what a student can learn here in, in Budapest uh, in a part-time job while studying. Anything you want to add, Anna, to that? Mm, no, I think I think you covered everything. Yeah, basically most of my friends work either in the coffee shops. Starbucks is one of the most popular ones because I think they gladly accept people who don't speak Hungarian. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a challenge, but it's it's really possible to find a good job. And how is your Hungarian? Do you want to share any words with the, the viewers? <laughs> well, I love the course from Stipendium Hungarikum at Corvinus. Perfect teachers, perfect everything. Um, and my hand, I, I guess my Hungarian is not bad. I can't really speak. I understand a lot when my Hungarians friends speak. But no, I would rather not share anything. I would, don't want to assault any Hungarians who may be listening to us <laughs> by my accent. <laughs> Okay, in that case, I, I, I will do the same. Uh, but guys, yeah, you'll learn a, a few keywords and it's quite fun if you can, can speak a little bit. And, and the grammar is very, very interesting. Hungarian's like no other language I've ever studied. It's not a Slavic language. It's part of this very bespoke language group, which um, linguists say includes Estonian and Finland, but it's completely different to Estonian and Finnish. It's a uh, it's a beautiful language and you're going to find it really interesting to, to learn a bit of it. You can understand more about the culture of Hungary through, through learning about the language as well, which is, is fun. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Abdul Rifat, how much extra activities matter for nomination? Um, we've moved on to the next one, but I'll just quickly answer that. I, I don't know, it's down to the sending partner. I mean, the more extracurricular you have, the better. It's not part of our university admission process. It's how you perform in the entrance exam that counts. 
Uh, Livia, is it good to include extracurricular in the motivation letter? Okay, these questions go go together. Um, and it is, but it's it's not. It might be something that the sending partner is interested in. It's good to show that you do things outside of the classroom, um, but it, it shouldn't be like eighty percent of your your motivation letter. So, yeah, maybe like ten percent, twenty percent max if you want to talk about extracurricular. If you've got some really uh, big big achievements, Anna, uh, what do would you like to say something? Um, yeah, I agree that it's good to include something but yeah only if it's like something outstanding not some details yeah, so yeah. yeah there is an activity section of the application form or work experience activities i i think work experience is really important i i think everybody should have work experience i i did my first jobs at the age of 16 um and i i always worked as a student as as anna is now and it's really really important and particularly if you're a master's applicant. So I think everybody should try to have some work experience and you can include that in your, your application as well. It's useful for the interview when you have to talk about your skills related to, to the programme and any kind of job uh, can be really, really valuable to you. Okay, Victoria, uh, how many scholarships are available for Corvinus? I don't know uh, the answer to that. I mean, all I can share with you is that it, the numbers that I did share, I can repeat. So we had uh, 387, I think it was, scholarships awarded this year in, in 2022. So it's probably going to be around the same number in 2023. And of course, uh, there's allocation for each program as well. Yeah, Th thanks, Lily. That's that's okay. Uh, Mo Zorba, Mo, I know I know you, don't I? We've we've met in person recently, so it's, it's good to see you here. Um, if I want to apply to MBA, should I have three years experience before submitting the application or is it okay to complete them in August and still apply in January? Yeah, Mo, so uh, if you have three years of work experience uh, before you start the MBA, so you need to have three years before September 2023. So uh, as I said, the magic number is uh, 2020 for graduation. If you graduated in 2021, it's going to be a bit problematic for an MBA. If you graduated in, in 2020, uh, you'll have the, the three years work experience. Okay, even if you started work in September uh, 2020 and, and you finish, you know, you, you start the program uh, in September 2023, you, you're going to be okay. So yeah, you can anticipate that you will have the three years by September 2023, if that's clear. Yeah, I I think we'll run for a few more minutes. Um, Anna, can you stay? Are you, uh, do you have classes? Are you yes, okay? Of course. No, I'm staying yeah. for how long? Yeah, you need me. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, guys, I think we'll we'll last until we'll stay until four p.m. and then we'll we'll close because there's still questions coming in. Okay, so Sarah or, or Sarah Schmidt is asking, uh, can we talk more about proficiency tests? Are they all considered equally uh, despite the pricing? Or do I have more chance of being rejected if I choose a less expensive test, TOEFL or IELTS? No, there's there's no discrimination based on the type of test. Um, look, all of these results are equivalent to B2 standard. Yeah, if, if you want to submit a quality application and impress the sending partner, um, probably you're going to need to speak C1 level of English, really. Uh, that, that's the kind of level that Corvinus students speak as a, as a minimum, but the, the requirements are, are B2. Um, no, there's no advantage to doing TOEFL over IELTS. Um, you won't be discriminated for doing Duolingo. The, the factor to keep into account is, uh, do the other universities you're applying to also accept? Yes, yeah, so for Duoling Cor Corvinus, Duolingo is acceptable, but if you're applying to another university, uh, so Budapest Business School, do they accept Duolingo? I, I don't know. I don't know their admissions criteria. So you, you should check uh, if you want to apply for a different priority to university, if they're also going to uh, accept that language test. But no, there's there's definitely, to, to reiterate, we wouldn't say, oh, this applicant has TOEFL and that's better than IELTS. That's, that's not how it works. You can produce any of those. Anna? Do you have enough battery left? <laughs> yes, uh, I personally did ILTS and I can say that I regret it. It was really expensive and um, 
I mean, just for myself, it was like, okay, I have this really cool now certificate, which is it, apparently it, uh, it, it has expired. Like it has expired like two days ago, I think. <laughs> this has been two years. But yeah, it's really nice that Corvinus offers, uh, accepts Duolingo too right now because it's so much easier and it's also less expensive. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter which one you do from the list that Corvinus, uh, that, that is stated at, at the website. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. These English language tests kind of expire. Yeah, so you'll find most universities anywhere in the world, they want your test to be within two years. Uh, in our case, a bit like the answer I gave to Mo about the MBA work experience, your English test should be within two years of the program start date. So you have to have done your English test after September 2021. Otherwise, it, it won't be within two years. If you have an English test dated more than two years uh, earlier, then we recommend you do the Duolingo so you have an updated uh, English proficiency certificate. Letitia, uh, work experience only as a full-time employee is, is, is a bit of a vague question. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I really don't know what you're asking. Is it to do with the MBA requirements? Is it to do with, with work? Uh, Anna, can you get your head around what the question is? Yeah, I think it's about the extracurricular uh, that we were discussing this a bit earlier. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, no, the, actually, the work experience is a section of the application form. Yeah. So th thanks. Yeah, that's I, I I get it now. Or, or the MBA. Um, I mean, so for the MBA, you must have three years work experience to to apply. You'll be rejected. For every other program, work experience is a part of the form. Maybe other universities use that as part of their assessment criteria. Corvina, strictly speaking, doesn't, but it is something that could come up in an interview. Uh, it's something that, that could impress us in, informally. And uh, similarly, it might be something that the sending partner is, is impressed by. You know, it's, it's going to look better. Uh, somebody with, with great grades, uh, who's got a couple of years work experience, um, is going to look better than somebody with a 2.0 out of 5 GPA who's never worked a, a, a day. Um, so it's just things that can help you to stand out. Yeah, I think we, we're going to close now, um, make that the last question. But for any of the questions that we didn't answer, I'll try to go to Facebook now and uh, answer as many as I can. And then we'll share the slides with you as well, which are really, really important because they've got all these links. And, and yeah, YouTube, YouTube is, is the one. Let's, let's get lots of views, please. Um, so thank you guys for joining. Share this with, with other people. Spread the word about the scholarship. It's really an amazing opportunity. Follow the guidance um, and we'll, we'll really love to receive applications uh, from you. And thank you to, to my colleagues, Lisa and Anastasia, who spoke as well and gave great advice and shared their experiences. Do you want the last word, Anna? Do you want to close? Uh, yeah, sure. If anybody has any doubts whether to apply or not to apply, apply because it's so worth it. I can't stress it enough. It's I'm living my best life right now through all the difficulties and everything. It's so good to to just I want I I wanted this and I got this and it's 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 just perfect. It's it's I don't know. Do it. Just do it. Apply. <laughs> apply. <laughs> That's my last word. Corvinus and apply to Corvinus. Corvinus. <laughs> That's, yes. that's a good note to end on. Okay. Thanks, everyone. So bye and good luck and apply to Corvinus. Bye. Bye-bye.